Hello everyone and welcome to section 6.4 where we will optimize a function. Um, so the goal of this section is to find global maximums and global minimums of functions that are continuous over uh, intervals. We will really break down the approach with two cases. The first case will be um, what happens if the interval is a closed interval, so where it contains the starting point and the end point. And in that case, uh, we will always have at least one global maximum and one global minimum. And then we will consider like the general case where anything can happen. So in the first case, uh, this is summarized nicely with the extreme values theorem. If you have a continuous function over a closed interval from A to B, then there's always global maximums and there's always global minimums for that function within the interval. And what I did for you is I did a couple of examples, visual examples, like to really see why there's always a biggest value and a smallest value when you have a continuous function over closed interval. So my legend here is the following. I have uh, three functions that are uh, continuous over closed intervals. And then what I'll do here for those three examples, I'll just label the global min and the global max. I'll use a big M for global maximums and I'll use a big, uh, I'll use a big, um, a small M for global minimum. And for any critical points, I'm just going to label them CI. So A will be for the starting point, B for the end point, C1, C2, C3, CI in general are going to be for critical points. And we're just going to find together global minimums and global maximums. So the first example, I see that the highest possible value is at C1. So my global maximum is at C1. And the lowest possible value for that continuous function over AB is at C2. So C2 is my global uh, minimum. So global maximum at C1, so I'm using a big M. And global minimum for C2, I'm using this smaller M. So here's a remark here. So for that first example, so boom. So what do we have in the first example? So remark here, um, the global min and the global max were reached at critical points. So critical points are really, really important because sometimes the global min and the global max will be within uh, the critical points. So you need to know where your critical points are. And of course, only consider those are within the interval of interest. But the global min and the global max are not always reached at um, critical points. So here for my second example, so same game here. Let's, so we have two critical points, C1 and C2. One is a corner. The other one is just a F prime equal to zero. Where is the biggest value? Well, the biggest value is at the end here. So at B, so here's a big M. And the smallest possible value is at the beginning. So at A. So the global min and the global max are sometimes reached at the end point. So here, next remark. So here, boom. So remark here, um, the global min and the global max for that second example were reached uh, at uh, end points. So it's the, the end points are the one that uh, got to the biggest and the smallest values. And then, of course, I have like a hybrid example. Um, so another example where we have f prime does not exist for c1 or undefined and c2 we have f prime equals zero. So here, if we just by inspection, we look for the biggest value. So we're going to get the biggest value at c1 and the smallest possible value. We have it right at the beginning. So at a. So here is we have a combo. So my remark here. So poof. So the global minimum was reached at. Uh, an endpoint and the global max was reached at a critical point. So all that just to say that if you are looking for, of course, visually, that's not a computation. We're just we're just labeling the biggest and the smallest value. But if you want to compute where the function reaches the global min, global max, the only thing you have to do is find critical points for that function, which means you compute its derivative. You find you find where it's equal to zero or when it's undefined. And then you just have to compute outputs at all the critical points within the interval. But you also have to check with the outputs at the endpoint because sometimes the endpoint, they have 
the reach uh, they they will reach the global min and the global max so you cannot forget about the endpoint but uh, you can really summarize how do you optimize a function over a closed interval first you find all critical points inside the interval a b then second you just compute a table of outputs where you compute the output for the endpoints at a and at b and at all the critical points of course within the interval of interest and then you just compare so for any values uh, for all the values where you reach the biggest possible y value those will be the global max and you will always have at least one for close intervals and for all the values where you reach the smallest possible value you have your global mins and you will always have at least one for close intervals so just by comparing the outputs you can find your global min global max and again here when we're when we say find the global min global max we're always talking about the x value you're using the y to decide which one are the right ones but the answer is always with respect to x so let's do some examples example let's optimize optimize means let's find global minimums and global maximum for the function x5 minus 5x plus 2 over the interval 0 to 10. So the first thing you do is you compute the derivative. So here, f prime of x, you just get 5x4 minus 5. Sorry, minus 5. And that's the derivative. So if you're looking for critical points, of course, you need to think about when is f prime crashing, but it's a polynomial, so it's never going to crash. So the only critical points you're going to find is when f prime is equal to zero. So when 5x4 minus 5 is equal to zero. So here you can isolate your x4 term. So you have 5x4 is equal to 5. x4 is equal to 1 by dividing on both sides by 5. Now, if you take the fourth root, because it's even, the fourth root of 1 will be plus or minus 1. So you get plus or minus 1. So then you have two options. You have minus one, if I put them in ascending order, and you have one. But when you look at minus one, this one is not within. So if we call our interval here i, it's not within the interval, but your one is within the interval. So the only interesting critical point for us is uh, one, because it's the only one that falls. So be careful, you don't want to keep all the critical points you only want to keep those who are within the interval, and the interval is always specified in the question. So year one is a potential a candidate. So now what you have to do next is just compute a bunch of outputs. So here we're starting at zero. So we want to compute the output at zero, um, at one, y1 because it's a critical point, and also at the end at 10. So here I'll just write on the side y we're using those values. So here at zero, the reason why zero is there is because it's an endpoint. It's the A value. So same thing for 10. 10 is there because it's the other endpoint. It's the B value. So we want to compute the output there. And the reason why one is here is because it's a critical point. So there's three outputs to compute. So here you just have to compute the output using the um, using the um, the, the function itself, so here for at zero, if you replace x by zero in your function x5 minus 5x plus 2, you're going to get 2. At 1, if you replace x by 1, 1 to the power 5 minus 5 times 1 plus 2 is going to give you minus 2. And then if you replace x by 10, 10 to the power 5 minus 5 times 10 plus 2 is going to give you 99,952. And now you just have to compare. So which one is the bigger one and which one is the smaller one? So here, the biggest possible value. Of course, I have the biggest value here in my table and my smallest possible value right there. So then you can make your conclusion. So where is your global maximum? Well, it's at x equal to 10. Where is your global minimum? It's at x equal to 1. Always answer with respect to x. So critical points to compute first. So this means you compute f prime. So this is a perfect excuse for us to make com to make you compute a derivative. Then you find critical points. Always think about the two type of potential critical point. Where does it crashes and where does it where is it equal to zero? In this case, we only add critical points of the form f prime is equal to zero. When you find critical points, only keep those who fall within the interval. In this case, between zero and ten. 
we only add one that fell within, we just ignore minus one, and then you just construct a table of outputs at the endpoints A and B, and at any critical points within, you look at the Y values, you find the smallest one, the biggest one, and then you make your conclusion just by comparing those outputs. All right, for that example, that's it. That's all. Let's go to the next one. All right, next example, we want to optimize. Actually, we're going to skip the next example. I'll let you do the optimize the root of X over X plus one over zero four. Uh, this one is done with a quotient rule. So make sure you try it though. It's a nice one to, uh, to go through, but we'll just go to the last example over closed intervals. So let's optimize X times E to the power minus 0 0.25 X over the interval zero five, the close interval zero five. So the first thing you do, you compute F prime. So here you need, of course, a uh, product rule. So you need to derive X multiplying E to the power of minus 0 0.25 X. So the derivative of X is just one. I'm using my product rule here. So one times the second function plus the first function times the derivative of the second one so e to the power of something will be e to the power of that something times the inside derivative. The inside derivative of the exponent is just minus 0 0.25x. In these questions, I love those questions with exponential term. You can factor by e to the minus 0 0.25x. So you get e to the minus 0 0.25x, leaving behind 1 plus x times minus 0 0.25. Mm, come on, okay, yeah, here we go. Uh, which can be rewritten as e to the power of 0 0.25x times 1 minus 0 0.25x. Now, if you're looking for critical points, um, well, the exponential term never crashes. There's no denominator. Uh, there's no root, or there's no even root, sorry, and there's no logarithmic term. Remember, this is crucial, okay, the exponential term is always going to be strictly positive. So this is not going to create a zero. So if there is a critical point, you're only going to find it by setting one minus 0 0.25 X equal to zero. So this will give you the following possible critical point. So for critical point here, uh, you just need to solve uh, one minus 0 0.25 X is equal to zero. If you bring it on the other side, you're going to get one is equal to 0 0.25x. And if you divide by uh, 0 0.25 on both sides, you get that x is equal to four. And of course that x, always think about it. It's very, very crucial here. Always make sure that um, that critical point is within the uh, interval. Again, and in, it is the case in, in here because four is between zero and five. So there's again here three points to consider. So zero is important because it's the beginning, it's the A value, four, the critical point, and then the end point. You don't need to write them in order. You can write zero, five, and then four, as long as they're all there. So again here, just you don't need to write this up, but just to make it clear. So we have a critical, sorry, we have initially an end point. So zero is there because it's an end point of the interval, four is there because it's a critical point within the interval, and five is there because it's another endpoint. So uh, now we just need to compute the output. I'm using my function x e to the minus 0 0.25x. So I'm using the actual function here. So if you replace x by zero, you can double check that you get zero. At four, the output is going to be 1.47. Two decimal places is enough. And then at five, you're going to get one point 43. Now you just compare the smallest possible value is zero. The biggest possible value is 1.47. So this means that there's a global max at x equal um, four, and there's a global min at x equal zero. Okay, so you have your uh, conclusion. And I love those examples where one of them is reached at the at a critical point within, and the other one is reached at an endpoint. So if you if you can compute a critical point correctly, or if you forget to include the endpoints, you're not going to conclude the correct thing. 
All right, so for examples where we are doing optimization, so looking for global maximum and global minimum over close interval, that's it. We'll move on to the general cases in the next video. All right, that's it. That's all. Bye-bye.